So you've been playing guitar for a while now and your guitar playing still doesn't quite sound good. Well, you're not alone. I've been there before and I've helped a lot of my students overcome these challenges. And in today's lesson, I'm gonna help you overcome these challenges yourself so you can get sounding better on your guitar. All right, so the first thing I want you to be conscious of is rhythm, okay? Not enough players are actually using the metronome, using the click as seriously and intentionally as you should be. So basically what you gotta do is you gotta sit down with a metronome and you gotta practice your songs slower than you think. And you gotta work on the quality of every single note along the way. If you can do that at a really slow pace, let's say 50, 60 beats per minute, if you can get that sounding clean and clear at that pace and not lose focus halfway through the song, you're on a good path. Then what you gotta do is you gotta eventually speed that up gradually. I like to use 10 BPM increments to speed it up from really slow pace to full speed. This process, I'll admit it, it's tedious. It's kind of a little bit boring. It's, it's hard work. But if you go through that effort, you're gonna come out the other side a much better guitar player. When you're playing with a click, you want your playing to be in sync with the click, right? So let's say we're at 90 beats per minute, quarter notes, and I'm playing a passage that is based in eighth notes. I'm gonna be on the click and directly in between them the best I can be. Here goes. <laughs> And of course, once you can play it at a slow pace, you wanna bring it up gradually. And this is where practice becomes serious training because you're gonna be coming from a slow pace, trying to play it cleanly as possible, and then try to take that level of playing clean and bring it up to faster and faster tempos. This is really challenging, but it's gonna pay off if you stick with it. <laughs> You're gonna have some time where you're kind of outside of that comfort zone and you're pushing faster and it's gonna sound a little rough and that's okay but I would say keep on trying to bring that level of clarity and consistency so you're playing at those faster tempos keeping on using the metronome and if you need to do smaller increments in speed if you're right at the kind of the cutting edge of your playing skill uh, instead of doing a 10 BPM increment try a two BPM increment. It makes it a lot uh, more gradual of an adjustment to make to increase that speed. The next big area I see intermediate guitar players struggling with is uh, note length and holding the notes as long as they should be held. So I call this feeling the beat with your notes. So basically let's take a simple, simple melody. Let's say we're doing this. <laughs> A lot of times we'll start out with something like this. So there's these kind of air gaps in between all of those notes. We wanna close up those air gaps uh, by kind of trying to hold the note as long as possible and wait till the last millisecond to move to the next note. Paying attention to this will lead to a whole new level of fluidness when it comes to your lead lines. So one of the next areas I see a lot of guitar players kind of get wrong is vibrato and bending. So basically with vibrato, what I want you to do is think about the speed that you're playing at, your tempo, and you wanna subdivide your vibrato at that tempo. So let's say my tempo here is 180 beats per minute. Right? If I play vibrato at that speed, I want to lock in with that groove and pull on the string maybe once per beat, like this. Or I can double it. Doing this ensures that we're not playing vibrato at some random pace and we're actually playing it in time with the song. So keep that in mind when you're doing your vibrato. The next point is bending in tune. Uh, now bending can be really hard if you're starting out or you're an intermediate guitar player, you can't quite bend those notes exactly to the pitches that you want. So there's a whole bunch of techniques and tricks, but basically I'm just gonna give you two quick points. One is, you can use more than one finger to do a bend, right? So when I do bends a lot of times, I'm using two or three fingers to push that string up. That way I can hit the note that I'm after without straining my hand too much. Another idea that'll help you bend in tune is just use a clip-on tuner on your guitar, 
play the note, see what note that is, play your target note, and then use the tuner to verify that you're actually able to hit that in tune with the note. And the last point that I've got is that a lot of guitar players are too focused on what they're doing, like their outputs, what they're playing with their fingers and what they're picking, things like that. Whereas what you should do is you should do what I call playing with your ears. So you gotta focus intentionally about listening to your guitar playing as you're playing it. And that can be a really challenging thing to do because it takes a lot of brain power just to play the guitar itself and play the notes that we want. With that, I want you to do two things. One, focus actively on how things are sounding when you're playing. Use headphones with your amp. If you have an amp that has a headphone out, plug your headphones in and listen to what your guitar playing sounds like totally isolated in, in headphones. You'll be surprised on how much more detail you can hear with this. The last tip I've got for you on that topic is to record yourself. Uh, if you're trying to learn a section, learn a solo, record yourself playing it at whatever pace you can, watch it back and try not to be too hard on yourself. Just try to be fairly objective about what's going well and what's not going well. And those things that are not going well, you can come back to and work on a little bit more. So these are the major things that I see in intermediate guitar players that hold them back from playing really, really well and having their guitar playing sound really good. I'm sure there's a lot of other possible things that could be happening with your guitar playing. So let me know in the comments below, what are you struggling with in your guitar playing? Maybe I can make some more videos about solving those problems. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful for you. I'm gonna wrap things up here. Check out my other videos on my channels. Consider subscribing, leave a like, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now, y'all.